it is challenging to some students because it, it is what we call a real mathematics. It is uh, uh, involved proofs, arguments, and you have to find a good reason to to give a proof. It's not like a complication. Okay, it's not like oh, I'll give me, you know, give me an integral. If you try and substitution, you use you evaluate the integral. Here you have to give the reason why is this true, why is this not true. Okay, and uh, first of all, we have to understand the difference between sequence and a series. A sequence, you know that sequence of numbers, a sequence of events, right? So uh, it's just a bunch of numbers, you know, labeled one, two, three, four, five, all the way to infinity. That's called sequence. Series means you have to add them together to to uh, to find the sum. So the <clears throat> so let me give an example. Okay, a sequence. What's the difference of sequence? Okay, sequence. A sequence example is like that. One over two to the n, and start from could be from zero to infinity. Okay. So if you write down the details, this is going to be one, one over two, one over two square, one over two cube, and so on. Now that's called a sequence. Series. Series is a sum of the numbers in the sequence. Okay. So that is called a series. Okay, so how do you understand a series? If you understand the integral, then you, you know how to understand series. Series is going to be the limit here, m approaches infinity, the finite sum of the first uh, uh, of those numbers. So if you are able to find this limit, and then you can find evaluate the series. Series is just like the infinite sum, okay? And uh, so, there, uh, in other words, if we, if we want to write on the details, this will be uh, one plus one over two, one over two square, all the way to the one over two n. Okay. Now, are you able to find the limit of this uh, uh, this finite sum? Okay. Well, we know that this is a going to be this geometric series find the geometry series it's a finite many terms there so uh i'm pretty sure in high school we already learned that this is going to be one minus one over two n plus one one over two n. okay one, uh, over one minus one half so after you simplify right you will get uh, you will get two times okay so the limit is going to be two. So the, the series, this series, the value of this series is going to be two. Okay. So that's the difference between series and sequence. So read the question carefully when we're talking about uh, convergence of a sequence or convergence of series. Uh, we say that in this case, the series is converging two. Okay. And uh, the sequence, when we say sequence, by okay, whether sequence convergence, we mean the, the term, the n's term, whether this is approached to a number or not. Okay. So there's a, a, a difference between sequence and series. Okay. So let's focus on the sequence in this section. Okay. Uh, a sequence in general okay, is denoted by Okay, uh, this notation, n could be started from any number, not necessarily from zero to infinity. Okay, if you write down the details, it will be n, n plus one, n plus two, and so on. Okay, that's called a sequence. For example, for example, uh, yeah, for example, like a n, uh, if n equals one over n, and n is greater than equal to three. Now that, what that means? That means we are talking about sequence, okay? And uh, the nth term is described by one over n, and it starts from three. So if I write, uh, if I write, uh, uh, 
yeah, Adam now can use the AN. Yeah, it's already, it's already specified, right? So, so in this case, like uh, uh, one over n, n greater than or equal to three, and uh, this really means one over three, one over four, one over five, right? If you write down all the details, okay? Now, sometimes we have to find the a, a formula, okay? Uh, for example, given uh, sequence, okay? And it's a four, negative one, one quarter, negative one to 16, and one over 64, and so on. So we have to find the pattern, then you're trying to uh, uh, label it. If the first number is denoted by A1, A2, A3, A4, okay? A to the five, and so on. So what is A? Okay, the nth term. Can we find out the general expression? All right. As we see, okay, first of all, we know that there's an alternating sign here, okay? When when n is uh, is up, this is a positive. When n is even, it's negative. How do you make it that? So you have to put the n minus one or n plus one here, right? Okay? Because when n equals one, you get positive. When n equals two, you get negative, right? So that's the way we describe the alternating sum. Now, <clears throat> the difference, forget the sign, right? The difference between a1 and a2 is A2, the absolute value A2, right, is going to be A1, absolute of A1 divided by four, okay? And the same here, if you forgot, if you forget the sign, then this will be A2 divided by four. So that's the relationship, you can see that. So just the, the next term is a previous term uh, divided by four. And then in the, you can even put a positive sign, negative sign. So if the first term, then this should be always like that, is four to certain power, okay? So uh, four to a certain power, and uh, the second term would be one, right? So when n equals two, this would be one. So this should be n minus two, okay? When n minus, when n equals one, you get, four. When n equals two, you get one here. And of course, the in front of that, there's a sign. Okay? So this is a general formula you can figure it out. Okay? You can also write uh, in this form four to the n. You know, it's up to you. But uh, this is a oh, four to the two n two minus two minus n. Okay? You can also express it like okay? So let's try to find another formula. Given a sequence, one half, negative four over three, nine over four, negative 16 over, over five, 25 over six, and so on, okay? Uh, you will see that the numerate, okay, the numerate of each fraction, the numerate are the, Mm, power function, the perfect squares, okay? So one square, two square, three square, 16 square, 25, uh, 25 is five square. The so denominator is increased one, two, three, four, five, right? So the nth term, the nth term, the denominator, the first term will be two. So, but increased by one. So I believe that's n plus one. Then when it equals two, three, then you will see that, right? It's two, three, four, five, six. The numerate will be n squared, okay? Because when n equals two, that's four. When it equals three, because it's nine, so three squared. But then there's a sign in front of that, negative one. 
and then it's alternate, right? So the first term is what is positive. That's why you have to n minus one. So n minus one, n equals one. That is uh, uh, the power is zero, so it's going to be positive. So we find this formula. Now, let's, but sometimes we are given the formula, how to, how to, uh, yeah, we're given the, we're given the formula to describe uh, all the terms. The formula could be direct formula, uh, n equals like this one, n squared over n plus one. It could be a relationship between two consecutive terms, just like the, like the previous one, right? You know, the n's term, is going to be the previous term divided by four multiplied by some sign, okay? So here, um, yeah, we are given n, n starts from one to infinity, but n is determined by, by the following terms. a1 equals one, n plus one equals five n minus three, okay? Uh, for n greater than or equal to one, so that, so the first term is one, and let's try to list a few terms. And two consecutive terms are related by this uh, equation, okay? So that means when, when a, then a2 is five times a1 minus three. So it's, a, so it's five minus three, which is two, okay? It's hard to predict what is next term. So a3 is getting five times a2 minus three, so five times two minus three to seven, okay? And uh, so a four equals five times a three minus three, so five times seven minus three, that's 32. So this number increasing, okay, clearly. But uh, can we find a general formula? That's a question. Can we or not? Yeah. Can we express n is a n in terms of n directly? If we want to do that, let's try a few terms to see if any patterns we can get, right? A2, I still go back to right, a2 is a1 minus 3. And it's 5 times 1 uh, minus 3. So a3 is going to be 5 times a2. I'm not going to compute. I'm going to I'm going to you not going to multiply them out. I just want to see the pattern. I get five square minus five times three minus three. Okay, just keep it like that. Okay, then you probably can find a pattern. A four equals five times a three minus three five five square minus five times three minus three minus three. I think I can see the pattern. So the leading term is always, right, five, you know, five cubed gets five squared times three, five times three minus three. You see that, right? Yeah, so I guess a n is gonna be five to the n minus one minus, I can take, the five, uh, take a, uh, you can n plus one make it easier, yeah, n plus one, yeah. Then this will be five to the n, Right, because three is uh, one is one uh, is a uh, one less than four. Okay, I take a five square, so five n minus one plus five n minus two, and so on to one times three. So this is a formula you can figure it out. Okay, right? that's general formula. All right, and uh, and you can combine it. Do we have? Do Do you remember this? How to edit this geometry? This is series. Okay, this series, geometric series. Okay, so the geometric series, we know that's going to be five to the n minus one, five minus one times three. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then you will be surprised, right? This is a uh, four, right? Three over four, five to the n minus one. Let's multiply this out. Three to the four, right? So one minus three quarters is quarter. 
and plus three over four. So this is the general formula, okay? This is uh, the formula for the A sub n plus one. If you want to use a n, it's going to be five to the n minus one, minus three over four. So clearly when a one, well, a, so that, then double check, right? This is a quarter plus three over four, which is what? Right, so that makes sense. All right, so we find this is a form, okay? The n's curve form. Yeah, uh, the geometry series, yeah. Uh, let me um, write down the formula. One plus r plus r squared all the way to the n is gonna be r to the n plus one minus one, all right? I hope you know how to find this form. Okay. But this is another formula is, is n times n plus one divided by two. Okay. Do you remember one square plus two square all the way to n square? Right? This is n times n plus one, two n plus one divided by six. <laughs> okay. We also have another formula. It's not very useful. Four, so eight one q plus two q. It's going to be n plus one divided by two square. So it's always a perfect square. <coughs> it's always a perfect square. Okay, this is a surprise to me because every term cube add them together becomes becomes the sum of this number square, right? Because one plus two plus all the way to the n is going to be half of n times n plus one divided by two. Yeah, this is a, this, this is kind of discovered, you know. Yeah, we surprised discovered. Yeah, you can check that, right? You know, one cube plus two cube is gonna be eight. And uh, one plus eight is nine. Nine is gonna be one plus two, three square. It's one plus two square, you see that, right? Okay, and then one cube plus two cube plus three cube is going to be nine plus 27, 36. 36 is going to be six square. Six is one plus two plus three. Okay, <laughs> All right. so that is surprising, okay? Uh, but it's true, okay, as you see there. All right, so let's go to next problem. We are given we are given the sequence as follows a1 equals two, a2 equals one, and a n plus one equals a n minus a n minus one, n is greater than or equal two. So that means that you can use this formula to get a3. Okay. And list list the first uh, eight terms, and can you see the pattern? All right, so this is the first eight terms. Uh,
Uh, okay, so let's see. A3 is going to be A2 minus A1. So that is going to be 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. A4 is A3 minus A2. So negative 1 minus 2. Right? Hold on. A2 or minus 1. So that's going to be negative 2. Well, it looks like we're getting a larger, larger number. A4 minus A3. So it's negative 2. What is A3? A3 is negative 1. So it go back to negative 1. <clears throat> okay. Then A6. So negative 1 minus negative 2. Well, we get positive 1. So we are not getting larger number. Yeah, I get two. That's okay. Then eight. So two minus one. So we get one. Now what does that mean? That means that it's, um, it's repeating. So you get two and one. You begin with two and one, right? So you're not able to, you're not able to get uh, different type of numbers. So the period is six. You see that, right? A, you know, uh, a two, a, a one equals two, a two equals one. So this is a complete pattern, like a two, one, negative one, negative two, negative one, negative one, then two, one, then that next one would be, it's periodic, okay? If you recognize that, it's important if I ask you to add all the numbers together, right? From all the first 1,000 terms together, right? And how do you do that? You just add all the numbers in each block, okay? And then you see how many blocks there because you have 1,000 terms divided by six, then you get a remainder, right? Yeah. So, but each block gives you the fixed number. Look at this block. Each block, two, one. Right, negative one, negative two, that cancels out, negative one. So each block gives a zero. So do not get any make the contributions. So if I ask you to find find uh, the sum a one plus a two all the way to a thousand, right? Okay, so you have to look at the pattern, cause of pattern. And you see that it's it's periodical. Every six terms, okay, add them together, okay, you will get zero because A1, A2, A3, A4, that cancel out, right? Right? Then A5, A6, that cancel out, okay? So that that is grouped like A1, A2, all the way to A6, A6, all the way to A12, and so on, okay? They're all equal to zero. So you don't get the any addition number zero plus zero, right? So only the last term you have to be careful. One thousand divided by six, right? One thousand divided by six. I I want to see the remainder, right? So uh, this is going to be one. So the remainder is four. So that means. The last, uh, okay, the last part is A1000 plus A999, 998, 997, okay? And uh, so this term will be A996, okay? So you will see that repeatedly, right? This is going to be two, one, uh, and the negative, negative, negative uh, uh, one, and, and negative two, okay? So you, you figure out, yeah, you will see that this is repeated. So add them together, it's also zero. So the sum will be zero, okay? Yeah, so this is also equal to zero. So total will be zero.
Nej. Uh. Now we, we, we are going to look at the, the limit. Given n's term, it's n over n plus one. Find the, the limit of the n's term, n in approaches, uh, approaches infinity. Well, in this case, uh, how do you find the limit? Well, you can find the limit, modify the function. You define the numerator and the denominator by n. Okay, so you get something like that. And clearly, the uh, one over n approaches zero. So you get as n approaches infinity, right? So the answer is one. So that's why we can write, okay? Now, if I change the problem a little bit, n equals negative n to the n over n plus one. Then I say the limit doesn't exist. Why is the limit that doesn't exist? Uh, the reason is it does not approach the same number. This does not exist. Okay. Why? Because if you look at the value of an, the value of an, if you're on the coordinate line, this is zero. This is a negative, negative positive one, negative one. This just, you have just jump, always jump, 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 jump. Okay. The approach is uh, two different numbers, negative one, positive one. But that's not approach the same number. So we say that limit does, does exist. Okay. Yeah. When n equals uh, even, so you get 2k of 2k plus one. This approaches one as k approaches infinity. So even numbers. But when it's other numbers, this will be negative. 2k minus one, 2k minus one plus one. This approaches negative one, All right? So as k approaches infinity. So that's why uh, the even terms approaches one, the other term approaches negative one. That's why a n does not approach any fixed number. That's why the limit doesn't exist. Right. Then how about how about this negative one uh, n minus one n? Okay. Okay. Now, if you look at this uh, this term. It changes signs, but if you draw the picture, it changes signs, but then it's going to be like that. You know, um, they're getting close, close to zero. Okay, right? so this is a, how do you know, right? When n increases, and how do I describe it? Clear. Okay, mm -hmm. I see that the pseudo n is going to be right, it's gonna be one of n. And this clearly approaches zero as n approaches infinity, okay? Now well, we have to find a reason to say it's that you cannot say it's obvious. So the observer n approaches zero, <laughs> then n approaches zero must have, otherwise it's not, right? So this implies n approaches zero as n approaches infinity. Okay. We do have a, a theorem to, <laughs> to describe it. Okay. But if the absolute value approaches one, does not mean n approaches one because n could be negative one, could be positive, right? Only for the zero is okay. So we have the following theorem called squeeze theorem. Okay, we, we can use that. So if n is less than cn greater than bn for n greater than equal to n. Okay, that's the first condition. Second condition is 
if the limit of both sides are equal, they're all equal to L, then the one in the middle approaches the same number. Okay. I think the picture is pretty clear. If we have an N, BN, right? This approaches L, this also approaches L. The guy in the middle will approach the same direction, same point. Right, two sides, what you say. Yeah, that was a typical story I remember. I was I remember one of the international students he brought how was the car insurance car. Okay. No registration even. No, he caused car accident. And that's his problem, right? Then then the other two students couldn't get the money from him. From the insurance because he's kind of not sure. They're very upset. They went to his apartment, a uh, classroom, waiting outside, and he came out. So, those two guys, each on each side, they forced him to go back to the bedroom and get some cash to pay them. Now, that's illegal too, right? According to the law, it's called robbery. <laughs> so, I, I, that's my pretty famous story when I was a graduate student. So, that. What this, what this, it's squeezing there, right? They're going to the same direction. Both <laughs> I remember this, okay? The approach, yeah, same point, it's a, it's a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he called Chris Madden. This are the two students. They're supposed to get money, now they're arrested because they're, this is illegal. Yeah. They're both illegal, but that's all now. All right, so this is a, a squeeze um, theorem. So we use that to go back to the th problem, okay? Let's go back to the problem, n equals n minus one, right? So look at, but so the value is one of n. So n is actually is less than or equal to one of n, greater than or equal to negative one of always. That does not matter, right? Because actually it's choose one of them, always. Depends on sign. So both sides approach zero, right? As n approaches infinity. So the guy in the middle approaches zero, that's it. Yeah, this implies uh, n, which is, this approaches zero, okay? Uh, okay, let n equals Sine n of n. Now that about problem is easy to see. It's lim the limit is is here. So how about this one? Well, so I don't know the sine the value of sine n. It's hard to tell. Like what is the value of sine one thousand one billion? Okay, of course you can use a computer. You know, then get approximate value. But it's hard to tell. So one, but the one thing we know is. The absolute value of n, right, theta, is always equal to less than equal to one. So the numerator is bounded. The denominator is getting high, high. So the limit is with zero. Okay, but how do you give a precise argument in correct in mathematics? That's the issue. Okay, you have to say that uh, you can say absolute of n is going to be absolute of sine n over n, which is less than equal to one of n. Okay, you can say directly, you know, this approaches zero as n approaches infinity. That forces the one, okay, actually n is between this, right? This approaches zero as n approaches infinity, actually by the squeeze theorem. Why is the squeeze theorem? It does not look like a bound by both sides, because whenever you see a absolute n is less than equal to n, so n is less than or equal to one of n, greater than or equal to negative one of n. Okay, okay, that's why uh, that both sides approach zero. 
right? Because that force is the one in the middle. <sighs> there are other theorems are very uh, common, like like if uh, if uh, if a if n has a limit, the bn has a limit, then a plus b also has a limit. Okay, and so I'm not going to uh, mention that. But the mo uh, the this is a uh, this is a theorem we I want to talk about. Okay, so if okay f of x approaches l as x approaches uh, a. Okay. So this is a function. If we know the function, right? And okay. And if B n approaches A as n approaches infinity, then F of B n, okay, this approaches L as n approaches infinity. That's obvious too, right? Why? Because and S approaches infinity, B n inside F approaches A. But when X approaches A, F of X approaches L. So, so then, uh, then you can find the, you know, then, uh, then F of B n approaches L. An example, a typical example is N equals square root of one plus one over N square. Okay. And this one can be viewed as F of, F of one over N even. Okay. And uh, yeah, and what is f of x? f of x is going to be square one plus x squared. Okay. So we know we know uh, this is by continuity, right? We know um, this approaches one as x approaches zero, but the one of n approaches zero when n approaches infinity. So so most of the time we just ignore the thing we can see that directly if one of n approaches zero then n approaches square root one plus zero so, okay but if you really want to apply that theorem you will see that you know you use this fact okay you also use the fact one of n approaches zero as n approaches infinity then combine them f of one of n approaches one as n approaches infinity, okay? Yeah. But you can do that directly. Uh, it's, it's obvious n approaches one plus zero square, okay? As n approaches infinity, which is what? Okay? So you can, you can simply write uh, the limit. Okay. Uh, all right. We can also uh, express the above. Yeah, we can also express as uh, the above theorem in the following form. If you have, if you have something like that, right? then the limit of n approaches a n is going to be okay, is going to be uh, the limit of x approaches a f of x if okay, if the limit of b n is going to be a as n approaches infinity okay. okay so you can change the reason I want to write it like this is because we, sometimes we can use the loop Peters rule to find the limit. Oh, kind of mess it. Okay. But you cannot apply the loop Peters rule directly to, to the function, which are not uh, in, the, in the x variable. Okay. So take a look at the following problem in the process infinity. Okay. This is a it's pretty strange function. All right, so I'm going to express this in the form sine one of n, one of n, right? 
So this is going to be also it could express sine x over x, where x takes when I went. No, there are many ways to write. Then you see this is my this is a this is my f of x right in the above formula. Okay. So when n approaches infinity, x approaches zero. So the limit of n is going to be the limit as x approaches zero sine x of x and i know this is going to be what yeah this whole sentence sine x of x where x equals one of n can be also as this whole sentence can be also just simply write like this okay this f of one of n where f of x is sine x of x All right, so how about the next problem? Okay. And here, uh, x uh, n approaches infinity. Okay. Uh, Bn is just n. Yeah, this a is not necessary to be finite okay this is number not necessarily finite it can be finite or infinite okay yeah so this is again to be limit as x approaches infinity nature log of x over x okay and then then we know how to find this limit right we use the lupitas rule because this is a both that goes to infinity. So it's a one of x over one, which is zero. Yeah, more precisely, nature log of n over n is gonna be uh, is gonna be f of uh, well, I should write this way first. Can be written as x over x where x equals n okay so x equals n you can also write it like this this is f okay uh f of n where f of x equals natural log of x of x so there are many ways to describe it okay so so when x approaches when n approaches infinity then x approaches infinity okay. so just replace n by x all right so the next problem find the limit as n approaches infinity, nature log of n plus one minus nature log of n. All right, to find this limit, we have to combine it into one term, it's n plus one over n. Okay, mm -hmm. and you modify a little bit. It's one plus one over n, right? So to find the limit, you see that when n approaches infinity, one of n approaches zero, right? One of n approaches zero, and uh, and then it, so this is a this is actually is going to be just x approaches zero, nature log of one plus x which is going to be nature log of one, which is zero. Uh, we 
let's look at the following formula. If we deposit a certain amount of money into a bank account with a fixed uh, interest rate, and this is a balance in tiers, okay? This is a balance uh, at the end of tiers. Okay. And uh, uh, we we what we do is uh, P uh, well, is the initial deposit, okay, and I is going to be the annual interest rate. And this is in decimal form, okay, like 0 0.05, for example. N is going to be the number of, of periods in one year. So it depends how do they kick with the interest. It's compounded monthly, daily, or quarterly, okay? So it's quarterly and N equals four. So the annual interest rate, if it's if 2% low, it's very low, almost nothing. It may be negative sometimes. <laughs> yeah, have you heard about negative interest rate? So, so uh, then you have to, if you compound the monthly, you have to divide by 12, okay? And the N times T means how many periods in the T years? Yeah, so that's why it's multiplied by this power, yeah, okay? And, well, that's why how do we uh, control the market? You know, if we decrease the interest rate, okay, then we don't want to put the money there. They want to spend the money. We invest the money somewhere. So that's why the more products can you sell, okay? It change a little bit, but it's the whole, so the whole country change a lot, okay? But if you say increase the interest rate, that means more people will want to save money, put the money into that, okay? And that, did, that they have an impact on the, on the companies too. That can much more difficult to get money. Okay. Uh, I don't know. This is a this is a how does that control the market? I still remember in nineteen one the called CD right in back is seven percent. Pretty high. You never see that. If you go to the bank, you want to say I want to. No, right? Savings account uh, called CD cost 35. Yeah, that usually be high. You know, you want to fix them and get withdraw the money for two years or three years. And suppose you get a job, right? You want to save some money to buy, uh, pay the mortgage. So you want to put the money in the CD, you know you're going to buy the house in two years down the road. So you put the first two years. So that gave you a little bit high interest rate. Okay, three years, five years. So it's lock it, okay? Then, uh, yeah, I never see this again, yeah, you know, that was to 1991. The rate, interest rate is 7%. It's much higher than any other investment. Yeah. All right, so this is all. So what we want to do is, uh, what happens if the interest is compound continuously? Continuously means you can only do by computer, okay? That means calculate the interest rate uh, every second or even a short time. So when n approaches infinity, what is the limit? Yeah, find the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, that does not mean your balance will increase significantly. Okay, <coughs> it has a limit. Okay, so when uh, n approaches infinity means you divide the whole year into more, more smaller uh, intervals. Okay, so it could be every second then how many seconds there right for the whole year so when any sufficient line so let's find this limit okay so this is uh, going to be the right so you can uh you can let um so you can express pn in the form one plus uh x i think i can use that okay then then uh then here will be R to the T and X. Okay, what is X here? X is R to the N. Okay, so 
right? Clear, right? You can X, it can be X uh, takes the value R of N. Okay, when it, for the R of N, then you get the, what you get, right? So in order to find the limit as N approaches infinity, you just need to find the limit as X approaches zero. Okay, so, so what is a, yeah, this is a, uh, yeah. in other words, this is a F of X, okay, where X is, right? Yeah, so if you, so you just need to find the limit as X approaches zero, uh, approaches zero from positive side, actually. Yeah, what is that limit? All right. That limit okay, is going to be, okay, I think it's one of x here, and this will be r times t. So this part, we already know that the limit is going to be e. Okay, the limit is going to be e. So it's e r to the t. Okay, this is where the number e from. Okay, this is a very important fact. The limit as x approaches zero from poly side one of x. Uh, uh, here's x, when of x is equal to a number. And that number coming from, you know, like a pi, the two important numbers are, are introduced by, yeah, by recognized by human beings, you know what I'm saying? Those are two important numbers. So the first number is pi from geometry. The second number is e from investment. Okay, so that is about 2.7 something. All right, so this is a, how do we find the limit? Okay, if we know this limit, then uh, then as above, then we see that the limit as n approaches infinity, bn is going to be p you know, and e to the to the rt. Okay, it's the same. So if uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, the barons. Okay, the same barons, but slightly large if interest is compounded continuously. Okay, this can be only done using computers. Uh, okay. The next like, next topic is about monotonic uh, sequence. Monotonic sequence means if n is always increasing or decreasing. Okay. And uh, we assume that and and uh, it is bounded. Then we said we conclude that this is when the limit exists. Okay. How do you how do you recognize that? Suppose n is increasing. Okay. So this is a coordinate line. Okay, suppose n is increasing. Increasing means the green going to that direction, but there is a line there, upper bound. Okay, so you cannot go past that line, that point. This is upper bound. So that means clearly, you know, they get more and more crowded, okay? Eventually, it reaches a limit somewhere before that or maybe just exactly so that is the limit this is the limit okay so it's easy to see that why it has limits because if it does not have a limit it will get a large 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 right it's increasing and then eventually we'll pass that point okay but we are told that it's up so the mass is a limit okay So that's the upper limit. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the following example. Okay, n is going to be two. Uh, yeah, there are too many radicals inside. <laughs> okay, how many? N radical. Okay, so. If I increase the number of radicals, what that can get? Okay, that's the question. Does it have an upper limit? First of all, okay, does this sequence of, you get sequence of numbers, right? You get sequence of numbers. You go, know, the first number is square root two, square root two times square root two, right? Square root two times square root two times square root two, and the people get, all right, so this is sequence. I think it's increasing, right? Do you think it's clearly it's increasing? Yeah, because the square of two is larger than one, right? It just compares those two. It's increasing, okay? It's not, a, it's not a easy to see, but it's increasing. Just look at this two. Why this two, why is the one on the right side is large? Because one is less than, Simple reasons when is less than square root two. Okay, that's why two times one is less than two times two square root two. Okay, that's why you put it. So this is a increasing. Does it have a bar upper bar? Does it have an upper bar? I think it has an upper bar. Upper bar is two. Let me prove it, three, okay? A1 equals square root two, it's less than two, clear, right? No problem. So A2 is gonna be square root two, uh, square root two, because square root two is less than two. It's two, okay? You just remove the radical one by one, okay? So similarly, a n okay, but this part is less than two, but there is a one in front there, right? So two by two. So eventually, you still get less than two. Okay. Now you can also do the following way. Uh, a n equals square root of two times a n minus one. Okay. Actually, this is given by that. Okay. Because whatever inside here is a n minus one. Okay, just one one radical rest, right? So if the previous one less than a less than two, the next one will be also less than two. So if a n minus one less than two, right? Step by step. So you keep going, you always can conclude that it's less than two. If, yeah, this is called induction proof. I'm not sure you you, you learned that in the, the high school now. I, at least I learned how to prove some sequence less than a uh, uh, fixed number. If you can you know, assume the previous one is less than two, you can prove the next one is also less than two. And it's always less than two because the first one is less than two, second and third one, you know. And I can you never end. But anyway, you agree with that, it's lesson two. All right, so lesson two. According to the above theorem, the limit uh, exists. Okay? The limit exists. But it's possible less than, but it must be less than equal to. But I don't know whether it's exactly equal to. Right? The question is what is, what is this? The limit exists, okay? And uh, so what is the value? You see, you have a sequence of numbers, okay, they are, this is a two, they're all here, getting close, close, not close, close, two, but it's the upper bound is two, and it's getting more and more crowded when n increases. Here's a, here's a, here's a, yeah, so this is a A1, right, A2, a three, keep it going. 
but they are all on the negative side too. But it has a limit. My question is, what is the limit? And how do you find this limit? How to find this limit? Uh, <laughs> you use this identity again. Okay? If the limit is going to be L, right? And this approaches L, that's also approaches L, right? So L equals square root two times L, let me square it. Then L, L is larger than positive, right? So L is positive, I'm pretty sure. So you delete L, you get L equals two. So actually it approaches two. It approaches two, okay? So the limit is actually is two. So now we can see that limit is actually two. Another, another interesting problem is, uh, another interesting problem is 0 0.95. You know, you learn this notation in high school, okay? Whether I'm in middle school, it's elementary school. So it's going to be like that, right? <laughs> okay? So you can view it as a limit. This can be viewed as the limit of the following number, following sequence. A n, what is n? 0 0.99 all the way to nine, have a nine digit set, okay, right? So the question is whether the limit, now you guess it must be what? <laughs> it cannot be less than one. Okay, it must be what? Clear. Okay, so this sequence, first of all, this sequence is increasing. This is sequence also less than less than one, right? This is an upper bound. Okay, then the limit exists. Okay, then in price, this one exists. Okay, so question is less than and less than equal to one. My question is whether this is really I think it's really one. Okay, the gap between n and the one is very small. Okay, and uh, you can express it. n is going to be right, zero point nine nine nine. I think what is the gap between them? It's a one minus. Right. One minus zero point zero 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 one n, I think, right? When you add them together, you get a one. And that is still a small number. And if you want to express it, it's going to be ten to the ten to the n. One over ten to the n. Okay. So that is uh the gap. Okay, the gap is one over. Okay. If we have an n, yeah, it's 0 0.1 to 1 over 10. 0 0.1 to 1. 0 0.01 to 1 over n squared. So that happens. Okay. So clearly, this approaches 1 as n approaches infinity. Okay? That's what, you know, you have to give an argument, precise argument. That's a difficult part. Of this course, this section, this chapter. Okay. You cannot say, oh, this is obvious. You have to give me the reason. I now have given a precise reason. I know how the gap between n and the one, which is one over 10 to the n is power. And this is clearly it's getting smaller smaller. Okay. Okay. So that's why. Uh, so 0 0.9 bar is actually is going to be one. Yeah, but 0 0.8 bar is not, right? It's going to be eight over nine, okay? The, yeah, 0 0.3 bar is going to be, yeah, 0 0.3 bar is going to be three over nine, which is one third. 
Okay, can you prove that? Or not? <laughs> yeah, we were told that, right? How do you convert a decimal form to a fraction? Okay. Now, why this is true, right? That's a question. We're going to learn that later. Okay. In uh, this involves the geometric series. Yeah, question is why this is going to be one third. It's real nine. Okay. Uh, the same reason, just have a limit. Just find a limit. Yeah, 0 0.3 is going to be a limit as n approaching infinity, 0 0.3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and 6. Okay, right? And the question is, what is that limit? Okay, how do you find it? Okay, how do you find this limit? I cannot find the, I don't know the, uh, what is the exact value right now, fraction. So I cannot use the above method to find the gap. Okay. So how do you do that? Let me show you how to do that. I still have a few minutes. So n's term, this can be zero plus zero point, right? So you have n term. Add them together. This is going to be 3 over 10, 3 over 10 square, 3 over 10 cube, and 3 over 10 to the nth power. Okay. Can I group them together? Yes. I get 3 over 10, 1 plus 1 over 10, 10 square, and then 10 to the nth power, n minus 1 power. This is a geometric series. I already gave you the formula at the very beginning. It's going to be 3 over 10, 1 minus 10 to the nth minus. Okay, we combine them into uh, one fraction. All right, what is the, what is the denominator here? So when, this is going to be 9 over 10. So 10 over 10, 3 over 10 divided by 9 over 10 is going to be 3 over 9. Okay. We have that. Okay, this this nth term is expressed in that form. Clearly, it approaches three over nine as n approaches infinity. Okay, so we solve the problem. Okay, we solve the problem. Okay, so that implies zero point three bar is going to be three over nine. Okay. Okay. Uh, 